Hi, welcome to Friday's Bible study. Um, as I've shared the last couple of uh, Bible studies we've had this week, just sharing some um, studies from scriptures um, that have spoken to me over the last couple of years or so, just going a little bit in depth in those. And today we're looking at Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 9. Um, so let's read that together. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 9. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. <clears throat> See, today I appoint you over nations and kings uh, to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. <clears throat> so it's this, uh, this is the call of Jeremiah in chapter one, right at the start. And God speaks to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appoint you as a prophet to the nations and Jeremiah kind of replies, but I'm, I can't speak very well and, and I'm too young. And God says, you know, don't worry about those things. Just listen. You need to go where I call you to go. Do what I tell you to do. I will equip you. And he reaches out his hand and touches Jeremiah's mouth, giving him the words, equipping him with everything that he would need to go and to be obedient. Um, now, this um, passage is the call of Jeremiah, has said, but there's it kind of has parallels, I guess, to many other calls that we see within Scripture where God calls somebody and quite often their response is, but I can't. And it's for whatever reason. You know, Moses, similar to Jeremiah, was I'm not very good at speaking. I've, I've got a stutter. Um, you look at Isaiah. I am one of unclean lips in Isaiah 6. And um, look at people like Gideon who just say, you know, I'm the, I'm the smallest member of the smallest family in the smallest tribe. Um, and I'm sure that for us as well, we often have the same response to God, but I couldn't possibly do that, God, because of this. I can't possibly do that because I'm not very good at talking or I can't possibly do that because I'm not very confident or I can't possibly do that because I don't have the money in order to do that. And yet God's response to Jeremiah and in fact to all of those people is, but it's, it's not about what you have, it's about what I have and what we could do together. And so I want us just to look at three things that God says to Jeremiah in this um, passage. Um, uh, yeah, and, and kind of form part of that call um, that God gives to Jeremiah. So the first is this, that God knew Jeremiah before Jeremiah knew him. That God knew Jeremiah before Jeremiah knew him. And that in turn obviously plays out for us, that God knew us before we knew him. See, our lives can often become about trying to figure God out to know God. But this passage here tells us that before we were even born, that God knew us. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God knows us, like intimately. He knows us. He formed us. Obviously, famously, Psalm 139 kind of almost echoes these words in a sense where it says, you know, I, um, I knit you together in your mother's womb. Just telling us that he knows us. Just telling us that he has that knowledge of us. And so often in our lives, especially as Christians, um, it can all become about the search for knowledge. To know more of God, to, to know more of the Bible, to know more about how to pray or what to pray. It, it all becomes about this, this search for knowledge. And yet the Bible is a story about the God who knows us searching for us more than it is about us searching to know God it's a story of the God who knows us searching for us more than it is us searching to know God and this is what um, God reminds Jeremiah of as he calls him he says look before you kind of look at any of your downfalls any of your issues like don't talk to me as if I don't know those things I knew you before you were born I formed you in the womb I knew you I know who you are, Jeremiah. Don't you worry. I know all your faults and all your failings and I'm calling you anyway. And God says the same to us. Yes, there might be reasons that you can see that you can't do something, but God says, I know you. I knew you before you even knew yourself. And so trust in me. 
And then we look at the idea of God choosing us. We are chosen by God, that we've been set apart. It says, before you were born, I set you apart. Could be translated, I chose you. God chose Jeremiah. And see, before we even thought that God might be important, before we even came into a knowledge that God existed, God had chosen us. He had singled us out as important. He has specifically chosen us to serve his purposes on this earth, to expand his kingdom, to take steps forward for him, to boldly go where he calls us to go. You know, Jesus repeats this idea in, in the Gospels of us being chosen. He, he emphasises it as a truth for us. John fifteen sixteen says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. See, God has chosen us, appointed us so that we could go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And whatever we ask in his name will be given to us. And our response might be, but I can't speak or I'm too young or I'm not confident enough or you've got the wrong person. But God says, no, I knew you before you were born. I know you now and it's you that I have chosen. God speaks those words to us as well today. God knew us before we knew him and as a result he's chosen us. We have been chosen by him. And then lastly we are chosen to be given away. To be given away. God chooses to send us for the benefit of others. We read here about the call on Jeremiah's life. And God says to him, you must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you. You see, Jeremiah's call was not an easy one. It wasn't a case of just kind of walking up the street, posting a letter for a post box, walking back to his house and job done. It was going to be a lifetime of turmoil. You know, at one point, for example, uh, Jeremiah is thrown into a cesspit, left to die without food or drink. And it wasn't until he was literally at the point of death when he was rescued from that, that cesspit. Jeremiah's life would be no kind of walk in the park. And yet God chose him. And sometimes this could be a challenge for us. We think, I don't want to go, that's too difficult. But actually it's part of the call of following God, that life, God doesn't promise us a comfortable life. He doesn't call us to live cautiously. He calls us to live courageously. And this idea of actually giving ourselves for others is built into us. You know, just as you know, birds were made to fly, we were called to live for others. We were not made to live for ourselves. That mantra of I'm um, just looking after number one is not a biblical mantra. We are made to love others and put others first. And so that challenge to Jeremiah, and it's to us too, is will you live cautiously or courageously? Will you be obedient and be courageous for me? Or are you just going to go for the comfortable and the cautious? And, you know, as Christians, Jesus challenges us with that same command. You know, when he's talking to his disciples about, you know, his, his death and the challenge and the disciples often would say, yeah, we'll, we'll go with you wherever you go. We'll come with you, Jesus. And, and Jesus would respond with um, passages like you need to pick up your cross daily and follow me. Whoever wants to come after me must pick up their cross and follow me. This challenge of sacrifice, of laying down our life for the benefit of others and in obedience to what God has called us to do. And so, if we want to be like Jeremiah, and we want to answer the call of God, then we need to remember that God knew us. He knows all of our faults and our failures. He knew us before we were born. So we might respond with, I can't do that because of this or because of that. And yet God says, no, I, I know all of that. I knew you before you were born. I know you now. And then he says to us, I've chosen you. I've chosen you for a purpose. And that purpose is to go and to love and live for the benefit of other people so that my reign and rule could be established on earth. Are you ready to answer that call? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word to us. I thank you for the demonstration of Je Jeremiah and the way that he lived and the way that he was obedient to your word. Lord, would you help us to be like that, to be obedient to who you you called us to be, Lord. I thank you that you knit us together in the womb. I thank you that you know us. I thank you that you chose us. Lord, I thank you that you give us for the benefit of others. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be obedient to that call. In your name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Have a really blessed weekend.